We are still waiting for a panelist, but I think now we are all in. So, welcome, welcome to our online talk on doctorate opportunities. This is an online talk series on research in Germany, and today we are going to focus on doing a PhD in Germany. I would also like to draw your attention to our upcoming online talks tomorrow. We will talk about postdoc opportunities and on Thursday you have the chance to ask your questions directly to German professors and get insights about selection criteria and how to apply successfully for a position. But now, first of all, I would like to introduce you to our panel today. We have today Dr. Claudia Eggert. Uh, Dr. Eggert is from the Bundesanstalt für Materialforschung und Prüfung, the BAM. Um, she's a member of the presidential board of the BAM and in charge of research coordination, international cooperation and the support for doctoral and early career researchers. And um, maybe also important to know for you that BAM is a senior scientif uh, scientific and technical federal institute. So we will learn later on what a federal institute is. We also have Dr. Jani uh, Wermter. She is from the University of Hamburg and uh, working there at the Faculty of Mathematics, Informatics and Natural Sciences. She's an advisor for internationalization and support for doctoral and early career researchers. We also have Alisa Arz. She's from the Forschungszentrum Jülich and working there at the Human Resources Development and Recruiting Department. And we will also learn uh, what the Forschungszentrum Jülich is all about. It's a large-scale research institution and a member of the Helmholtz Association um, of German Research Centers. And then we also have two uh, doctoral candidates. We have Isen Bishuta. She's also working at the Forschungszentrum Jülich. She's doing the, her PhD in medical neuroscience at the Institute of Neuroscience and Medicine. And we have um, a second doctoral candidate, uh, uh, Ms. Swati Srivastava. She is from the University of Heidelberg. Uh, and she's there a doctoral candidate at the Heidelberg Institute of Global Health. So welcome to the panel. We are glad that you are here today. And um, first of all, before we start now with, with the questions, um, um, I want to address uh, our audience today. If you are watching us live today uh, and want to ask us a question, please be so kind to use the panel on the side of the screen to ask your question and you will only be able to ask a question in this way and we will try to answer your questions on the go so just put them in the chat and I forget, forgot to introduce myself <laughs> my name is Birgit Klüsener I'm the director of the scholarships department here at the DAD um, as a little warm-up oh you already I think the poll already started so you were faster than I was so our question was what is your current career stage and uh, and we can clearly see that most of you are graduates, so more than 80%. That's quite good. Then, then you are in the right uh, online talk today because we want to talk about your next career step of um, how to become a PhD student in Germany. And we also have already some PhD students who joined us. Maybe you want to see if you can switch um, to Germany and do parts of your PhD also in Germany. Um, we received a lot of questions from you um, before our meeting and we uh, looked at them and um, filtered out what we thought some of the most important questions and we want to start with entry requirements for a PhD because we received a lot of questions on that. Um, Gianni, can you um, tell us a little bit what are the entry requirements for a PhD uh, at a university or in your case at the University of Hamburg. Is it already possible to apply with a bachelor's degree or is a master's degree always mandatory? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yes, okay. Um, to start a PhD, you first of all need a proof of a completed university degree in a subject relevant to the doctorate project. 
that is MSc, Diploma, Magister or Master's degree. Uh, it includes also the first Staats exam or state examination or a comparable degree um, for a University of Applied Sciences. So that's um, the pre first prerequisite. Um, yes, of course, uh, the question is, so can you start with a PhD or apply for a PhD without an MSc or the named um, certificates? Um, yes. Uh, University of Hamburg has got a so-called fast-track program. So it gives outstanding students from all over the world an opportunity to do a doctorate right after completing their bachelor's. But they, you must have graduated with um, above average grades and intend then to pursue the doctoral project at the University of Hamburg. Yes, thank you very much. Claudia, um, would you like to add something on the entry requirements um, when it comes uh, to to your institute, a federal institute? Is it the same? Do you also have a fast track uh, possibility at the BAM? Yeah, first of all, hello to everyone in the audience and uh, thanks for the question. Um, the Federal Research Institutes, I'm, I'm not talking only for BAM as a the Federal Research Institute funded by the department or the, our Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action, but all the other departmental research institutes, they collaborate with universities since they cannot uh, give degrees by themselves. So we work with all the universities and accept their fast track options or whatever uh, uh, track options they offer. So when you uh, decide to do your PhD at uh, one of the non-university um, institutes, you will always have an academic partner. I think this will also be true for uh, Helmholtz or Fraunhofer or, or any of the non-university institutes you heard of yesterday if you attended the talk, the introductory talk. So for us, it, it's uh, you would feel like a regular PhD, but you have um, two supervisors, one at BAM and one at an academic institute, or uh, there's this possibility that um, several of our senior scientists also hold a professorship at a university, and then this would be always in junction with the university and one supervisor. Yes, thank you very much. We are all already receiving a lot of questions. So um, somebody, somebody is asking, um, I think there's a person who already graduated in Germany. If I graduated, graduated at a Hochschule, I think it's maybe uh, a University of Applied Science here, uh, what is meant, is that limiting my chances to get a PhD position? So th that are the different um, university types in Germany, University of Applied Sciences, was this, uh, the full university, so let's, let's speak. So what is necessary if I um, graduated from a University of Applied Science? Maybe from, from, the, uh, from your point of view, from the University of Hamburg. Is it uh, possible to directly apply or do I need some courses later on? Um, as far as I know, um, you cannot directly apply. I think you need uh, some courses or you need to talk to your um, potential or future supervisor if uh, it is possible to directly go into taking a PhD or which courses are to be taken prior to taking the PhD or prior to applying for a PhD um, study. So I think that is a good advice. Um, so it's necessary to get in contact with your university, with the faculty. And I think it also depends from faculty to faculty and, and um, w what have you done um, um, in, your, in your master's work at the University of Applied Science uh, that they can see if something is still needed or do you need some more uh, coursework, for example. And we also received a question regarding internships. So there was a question, are, intern oh, are internships needed? So my, my, my just, <laughs> the monitor went black. <laughs> are internships needed before you start a PhD in Germany? So is this mandatory or is it a good advice? So maybe to 
Isan or Swati, have you done an internship before your PhD? Um, I did an internship during my master's degree, but not like without a scholarship, no. Yes, I also did an you internship um, for my first master's degree, but I believe that was not really um, required or a formal um, requirement for the PhD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. I, f from all I know, that is uh, yeah. absolutely true. So um, it's always good to, to have an internship at a certain step of your uh, scientific career, also to see um, how research is, is done in, in an other environment, for example, or to learn um, um, more about work at industry, for example. But it is not um, necessary or a prerequisite if you want to apply. Uh, for a PhD position. Um, we already talked a little bit, or we saw it in the movie, um, individual versus structured uh, uh, PhD. Um, so, Alyssa, can a candidate pursue both types of PhD studies at the Forschungszentrum Jülich? Um, can you talk a little bit about that and about the major differences about individual PhD and Yes, PhD um, in so a, at a, Forschung in a program. Munich, we supervise approximately 1,000 uh, PhD candidates each year, and um, the majority pursues a structured PhD. Um, in 2019, we implemented UDOCS, which is the Uli Center for Doctoral Researchers and Supervisors. And as part of UDOCS, we also standardized the PhD process. So the doctorate is planned for three years, and our doctoral candidates um, receive a contract for the period of three years. And for this time, certain milestones are defined in advance, for example, to provide a project outline um, after six months or to give a progress report after 18 and 27 months. And also different committees are involved in the monitoring process, and there is an accompanying transferable skills program that is part of the process, um, which includes mandatory and optional training courses in four different competence fields. And in addition to this standardized um, PhD process, there are also candidates who pursue um, an individual PhD, but since we mainly um, have positions to fill for the structured program, um, I'm not so familiar with the details of an individual PhD, um, which can also vary from um, case to case. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, Isen, you, you're already doing your PhD uh, at the Forschungszentrum Jülich. Um, how did you learn about your position? So how, how did you get the information? Oh, yeah. So um, like every student, I was looking for a position on the internet and I found my position in your access and I applied directly on the Jülich uh, portal, um, application portal. So I I applied for a paid position and after that I had two interviews and I had to apply for the uh, university uh, PhD um, department and so that, that it was really structured so <laughs> so that that was a good experience for you yeah. um be beforehand we um, I saw a lot of questions regarding um, um application to institutes and there were a lot of people saying well um they they never received an answer, so it was very difficult for them to get in touch with uh, with an institute, and they were asking, what, what what am I doing wrong so that I don't get get an answer? So are there any tips and tricks? Maybe Swati, what would be your advice? You were successful. Um, um, what is the best way uh, uh, to find a supervisor? And um, what 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 can what advice can you give to to candidates? Uh, thank you very much for the question, and I think yeah, this is a question very um, relevant for for researchers or students who are looking for PhD supervisors. I think first of all, I think there has to be a good batch, so you have to find supervisors um, which are interested in your topic. Um, so that would be the first thing that I would advise any candidates to do is to do your research properly and try to find those supervisors that are interested in the type of research that you are doing, or who perhaps have done similar research, so they, they have some investment already into, into the topic. And um, secondly, I would, I would ask everybody to reflect upon um, what value you bring to, to that topic. So how do you contribute, or your proposal contributes to the evidence base that, that or, or the topic that you're trying to research. So I think it's really important 
um, that you have this in mind in, in order to get other people invested or the professors interested in your topic, um, just to begin with, to start a conversation. I think that this is really relevant. You really have to show how you can fit in and, and what added well you, you can bring to the institute and how your research work fits into the topics of the institute. So people want to see that you took the time to uh, and, and invested some time to see what research is underdone in the in the institute you're applying for. Mm -hmm. um, we are already getting a lot of questions, so there are also questions about funding. Um, Ivan Morales is asking, I'm from Mexico, currently working in the UK. For scholarships, is it necessary to apply from Mexico channels with DID? So this is a question to the DID, I think I have to answer it. Uh, yeah. No, if you, are, if you are currently working in the UK, you can apply from the UK. You don't have to apply uh, via Mexico. Um, so then is there a question, while pursuing a PhD at a non-university institution, does a PhD candidate have to teach bachelor or master's students? So, um, how are they involved into teaching if they are at a non-university institution, or are they involved in teaching PhD students? Let's see. If I can answer for the uh, federal research institutes, this would be highly unusual. I think if you have a, an urge to in, be involved as a PhD student in teaching, we would probably find a way uh, to arrange something, but it's highly unusual. So you're a really dedicated researcher while you're doing your PhD. For the research center, uh, Jülich, okay. um, I think it's the same. There are no teaching obligations um, at Jülich, but it is quite common that um, a PhD candidate hires a bachelor or master student to write his or her thesis at Jülich and to supervise them when, when writing that thesis, but um, this is something different than the classic As teaching mm -hmm. um, you will do at a university. Then there is a question on uh, on remote PhD. So um, Katerina um, from Greece is asking, is there an, an opportunity for remote PhD in remotely attending a PhD and research program? Um, I don't know about it, maybe somebody can answer. So uh, first of all, I think we, we have to say that in Germany, the PhD is a research PhD. We don't have taught PhDs like, for example, in, in the UK. So I, I think it could be a little bit difficult doing it completely remote, but maybe things have changed during Corona. Um, is there anybody who can answer to that? Uh, Jenny, um, would it be possible in, in, in Hamburg to do a complete remote PhD? Um, no, I don't think so. Especially um, at the Faculty of Mathematics, Informatics and Natural Sciences, um, if you do lab work, it is not possible to do remote lab re uh, work. But during the corona um, period, there were certainly phases where you can work from home, where you can write your dissertation from home, but it's not a standard, um, a standard uh, situation. It, it's what I can say I w about that. Um, I would yes. add maybe if you're doing a PhD in the humanities or social sciences, even when you're based in Germany, you, have, you may have very loose links because you work from home. This may be a situation where a remote, uh, a remote uh, PhD with uh, exceptional stays in Germany could be possible. But yeah, I don't I know if there's any about... expert Sorry. <laughs> in our panel. I was panel. Still talking about the Faculty of Mathematics, Informatics yeah. and Natural Sciences, but you're right, yes. Mm -hmm. In that case, it is possible, yeah. Okay, so under cer certain circumstances, but it's uh, not um, not the common common way. Let's let's put it uh, like that. You you really would have to talk to your supervisor to see if that is possible or how much presence um, is needed. Um, we are also regard uh, receiving a lot of questions regarding age limit uh, or age limits um, for starting a PhD in, in Germany. Um, Claudia, is there any age limit at BAM for a PhD? 
No, there, there would be no age limits um, by BAM, but by university. So we are following the rules because we are doing in some parts quite applied uh, research. Uh, there, are, there are careers where people are already very advanced or have been in industry and they um, switch to doing their PhD at a later stage just because they like it or like to advance their career. So they are, um, at, at BAM, they're exceptionally older people compared to the classical university academic career. But it would always have to follow the uh, application rules of a university. Yes, maybe I can add, when it, when it comes to fellowships, there are no longer formal uh, age limits. Uh, that would also be a kind of discrimination, <laughs> age discrimination. Yeah. But you always have to look, um, um, people are always looking, for example, when it comes to fellowships, what have you achieved in a certain period of time? So that is important. Or when was your last um, 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 graduation from, from university, for example. So it's not a formal age limit when it comes to, to the age of a person, but it's more the question, what have you achieved in a certain period of time academically? Um, mm -hmm. So though we are already receiving some more questions. Um, there's one, I'm a PhD student in Germany and I'm in the second year of my PhD. Is there a possibility to get to get funded from the DAD for one or two years or DAD only funds new PhD students? Um, mm. Swati, I think you are a, 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 a DAD scholarship holder. So <laughs> what was it in your case? Um, uh, did you receive a second year or um, did you re uh, receive a, a fellowship for your start in Germany? Um, my case is a, um, yeah, a little bit longer than a, than a traditional just entry through that. So I joined um, my institute um, earlier because I wrote a proposal with my supervisor which got funded and through that funding I conducted my data collection and um, because it fell within the period that I was eligible to apply for a DAD scholarship I then applied for a DAD scholarship and then I started the first year um, up with the scholarship. So although I was already in Germany and I uh, collected all my data um, I only started my PhD with the scholarship. From here okay, apart. thank you very much. Well, well, I can also add from the DAD um, you can apply if um, at the time of, of the application you're not longer than 15 months um, uh, in Germany. So if you're longer than 15 months in Germany you can't apply any longer for the DAD um, uh, scholarship at that time. Because we, we want to um, promote mobility and if you're f more than a year at this case 15 months in Germany you also have the chance for example to apply to to a PhD program, they also have a lot of um, um, fellowships in, in certain cases. So we don't give these fellowships any longer if you're longer than 15 months already in Germany. But it's, if it's a first year and then um, you want to apply for the second year, um, that is possible. So maybe th there's also a question that we can ask to Isen and, and Swati. Um, what was it when, when you were coming to Germany? Um, Finding um, finding a place to live. Um, um, what what have you done to do that? Maybe Isen, you you want to start? Uh, yeah. Um, well, to find a place for well, my flat, I actually before coming to uh, Germany, I had a quite good communication with my current supervisor, and she asked uh, for people she knows around in in Yiddish and uh, also fellow if they know uh, some landlords. So uh, I got my flat thanks to contacts. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so that is the best possibility <laughs> if people are helping you um, um, at, at the institute, if you already have contacts. Swati, w what have you done to find? Heidelberg yes. is, is difficult. It's difficult to find a place well, in Heidelberg. Um, so, what have you that done? I got accommodation for the first three months in the university guest house. And then for the next two years, I um, stayed in different sublet apartments, so I never got an apartment on my own. Um, I changed six apartments in two years. And then finally, I got lucky and I got um, student accommodation, so I'm very grateful for that now. And so I have, I, 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 um, it takes a while, but 
I think you will get uh, student accommodation. Um, in my case, that, that was what really helped. But it, yeah, I think it's useful to be connected. And I also found many other places I stayed um, through the university networks and through fellow students. Um, So thank you very much. So you, you have to be a little bit flexible to, to, to find the right place. But before you have to find housing, you, you have to find the right program, um, uh, the, uh, the right doctoral program. And um, maybe, Jenny, um, how can people find out which, which programs are available, available in, in, for example, in your case at the Faculty of Mathematics, Informatics, and Natural Science? How, how do people find out about your offerings? Um, well, of course, we've got um, the job or opportunity um, database of the University of Hamburg where everyone can search for an open position by topics, by type of positions, by departments, by faculty, and even by supervisor in a comprehensive manner. So this database gives you an overview of the actual open positions. And of course, all the clusters of excellence and all um, uh, the, um, the, the research units, the research centers and the departments advertise um, their open positions on their websites. And um, certain, um, certain researchers or doctoral students or postdoctoral uh, researchers just write to our um, faculty tutors if they would like to ask for a position, an open position in, at a specific department or at a specific researchers. We've got tutors at the MIN faculty who um, have got contact details, well, email mainly, and who are uh, responding, who are dealing with those uh, um, queries. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And Alyssa, um, what is important at, at Jülich, if you are looking for um, a PhD position at Jülich, I, is it the same yeah, as in I Hamburg? Yeah, I think it is quite, quite similar. You can apply for open position um, that can be found on our website. Um, there are many open positions and nearly um, each week we publish new positions. So if you're interested in joining um, for a PhD at Forschungszentrum Jülich, I would recommend to frequently check the website. And if you have no idea so far which institute could be of interest, um, you can use our filter function, um, for example, to look for um, a PhD position if you have done um, or, or if you have a degree in physics, for example, then you will um, see what positions are open in this field. And if you cannot find a suitable position on the website, then you can also um, submit an open application um, that should be sent directly um, to the person of contact at the institute to which you would like um, to apply. And again, to find out which institute um, fits your research interests, you can take a closer look at the research topics um, on our website or the institute's list. There is an overview, also an overview of keywords which institutions are dealing with um, which topics. So um, there are different ways and mainly the website um, that is helpful to find a position. Mm. So thank you very much. And um, I would also like to point out that there are several databases all, uh, also available in Germany that will help you in finding a suitable position. There's, for example, the Gerrit and Gebris uh, database by the German Research Foundation and our colleagues will will give you the links for that um, in the chat. And um, at the DID, we also provide um, um, a database called PhD Germany. There are open PhD positions posted uh, in this database. And there's also um, a database called International Programs in Germany. So universities send us uh, their international programs. And um, you can also look up w what is offered there. So there are a lot of um, possibilities um, in that respect. Um, a minute ago, I saw a very, I think, very relevant question um, by, I think it was Lutz, Lutz uh, Botero. And um, he was asking um, if I did my, my master's degree, um, I have to remind what he's saying. I can't see the chat any longer. Um, if I did my master's uh, degree uh, in a certain field and then I later on want uh, to do a PhD, is it important to have a change in subject or 
Uh, is it better to do a continuation of the research work? So when, when you look at your applications at your university or at Jülich or at the BAM, um, what do you think is important? Uh, rather to stick in the field or to show that you are open up maybe your research? Who wants to answer to that? Um, so I think both ways are absolutely fine. Yes. I think it depends on what you are looking for. If you would like to stick to the topic that you dealt with um, in your master thesis um, and you would like to um, go deeper into the topic and to continue research, then this is absolutely fine. But um, at Jülich, um, especially um, as we are a really interdisciplinary research center, um, our PhD positions, they are very often um, advertised for people with a, with different backgrounds. So for someone with a background in physics, material science, engineering, so there are many um, different backgrounds listed in the job profiles. So it is also quite common that someone changes the topic and um, chooses a new topic for, for a PhD. Mm -hmm. Well, from, from my experience, um, um, I, for many years I was responsible for postdoctoral programs at the DID and w while talking to, to selection committees I always saw that it's a little bit more important maybe at the postdoctoral level after your PhD. Then people often want to see that you are able um, to, to, to work in a new research field that you um, Yet that you are finding your own research um, and, and no longer stick to the research work of your supervisor. So I think it's maybe more important um, after the PhD, if you want to do a postdoc, then to show um, that you're you're widening um, your field of research um, in a way. But but maybe not so much after the master's degree. But but there's certainly also the possibility to to change the field a little bit. Um, we're getting some more questions. I have to look them up. Um, so, um, this is a question from Alma Polo Barrios. Um, I like to get an advice. After checking the information about the PhD doctorate studies, what would be the first step we could walk to get this position? So, somebody is reading. Um, your open position is interested, and what would be then the first um, step? Um, maybe uh, Isan or Swati can answer to that because you have first-hand experience <laughs> on that. What, so, what have you done after you read uh, or saw what what research is is underdone at, at Heidelberg or at Jülich? What was your first step then to get in? touch and in contact. Yeah, uh, so what I did after um, applying the application portal, I contacted directly my, super, my current supervisor because I was <clears throat> highly interested in her research field. So I, I sent her an email uh, saying why, what are my motivations, my background, uh, well, everything she needs to know about me. I sent her uh, a letter of motivation uh, my CV and uh, I think it was the, a great opportunity to send her a personal statement. Um, so it's literally personal. So <laughs> you really have to um, talk about why personally you want to do that, not only in a professional way, but uh, you can really show your passion. And I did that. And this is, um, I think this is uh, it was a really good <laughs> choice because I, I could have a direct contact with her and she contacted me really quick and this is how we did the process actually. Thank you very much. And Swati, what, what have you done? Um, I would echo uh, Isen's um, entire statement. So although I did not have um, an advertised position, I just contacted my supervisor um, from the beginning and I told her what research areas that I was interested in and how she, she already had expertise in those areas, so I was able to convince her about what I wanted to research and, and how um, I could learn from her and, and what, I, what skills I could bring um, to this research. And so it, it was just a mutual correspondence after a while. And for me, it took um, three years after initiating this, this correspondence to actually um, get funding for, for my study. 
Um, but I think it was the same that, that I was able uh, to be in contact with her and, and to, to show to her that I was invested in the topic and that I really wanted mm. to, to research in this area. Thank you very much. But but your example also shows that you sometimes need a little bit of time, so uh, yes, to establish much. the context and con uh, contact and and to show people that that um, your research is really fitting in and that you can contribute to the research work um, of your host institution. We are also getting some more questions regarding um, applications. Um, it's changing so fast. I really have to look it up. Um, so. Uh, Mohammed um, is, is asking, can we apply for a PhD right before being graduated from the master's program? So, so what is the right point to, to apply? So is it possible to apply, for example, in, in Hamburg or at Jülich or at the BAM um, before the master's degree is finished, so at the end of the master's degree, before, they have this, before you have the certificate of your master's degree? wants to answer to that. So uh, Alyssa is, is uh, I think from your gesture and also from Claudia it is possible. Yes it is. So um, as, as you said it takes some time after sending in your application until you receive the contract and uh, until you can start. So we always recommend that four to six months before you would like to start um, would be a good period of time to start applying. And um, yeah, if the certificate um, of your master's degree is not there, then um, you can hand it in afterwards or as soon as you um, receive it. And until then, we just need the transcript um, of the current courses um, that you already did in the master's studies. But it's absolutely fine to you to apply before you completely finish. Thank you very much. And we are also, oh, Claudia, you wanted to add something? Uh, you are muted. We we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, the, so <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to add that the same holds true for BAM, and I would just to support uh, our PhD experience to get in touch with any of the supervisors you can identify. Even if you have a question, uh, am I too early? Am I on time? And take the courage because they're all human beings. And I think if you approach them in a personal manner, um, it's it's a double check for both sides to stick out of uh, unknown mass of people uh, and to get to know each other as early as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We are also receiving questions regarding language skills. So they have the question, is, is German needed uh, for the PhD? Do you, do you need German language skills? And, and when it comes to English, um, uh, are, is a TOEFL test needed for entering a PhD program, for example, at the University of Hamburg? Uh, well, I can speak for the Faculty of Mathematics, Informatics and Natural Sciences. You can take your PhD um, in English or in German you don't need any uh, language certificate or whatsoever um, because uh, it's the supervisor who speaks to the future PhD student and um, we don't require any English certificate and you don't need any German language um, um, knowledge either so we don't require any German language uh, certificate either. Mm -hmm. So you can do your dissertation in English and um, uh, you can do the whole doctoral research in English, including your disputation, which is your oral examination. And uh, Alyssa and uh, Claudia, is it the same at Jülich and at the BAM when it comes to language skills? Yes, it's for us even as a as a more uh, uh, 
ministry-oriented organization. It's a high number of international PhD students and you can survive very well with just yes, English. I think uh, for the majority of our positions, this is also um, the case. I know that sometimes our institutes, um, for example, if a project is funded by a German funding organization and project reports have to be written um, in German language, I know that some institutes decide to hire a candidate uh, with German language skills so that uh, he or she is able to, to write the um, yeah, reports on his or her own. But I think for 95, 98% of our positions also um, English language skills are absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, Swati and Sen, um, what was it when, when you were coming to Germany? You were already speaking some, some German or have you learned now some German and is it necessary in your <laughs> daily life in Germany? Well, I don't speak German. <laughs> okay, so you survive without German. <laughs> I speak German, and uh, me, I'm enrolled in at the um, medical science department of the University of Düsseldorf, and for the enrollment, uh, it re it's uh, required to have an English test. Uh, but um, for me, because my process was quite fast. Um, I only did a Duolingo English test uh, and it was completely fine. You only need a C1 level, but for German it's not necessary. Thank you very much. And uh, Swati, what have you done? Have you learned any German before coming to Germany? Um, At the DAD, we, all, we always like to have our scholarship holders to, to learn German because it's, we think it's uh, better for them to, to integrate uh, um, into the culture, into, uh, to, to make uh, make the living easier also in Germany. So what have you done? Yes, I fully agree with you. So um, I had not learned any German before coming to Germany, but as a DAD scholarship holder, I um, first uh, took the um, initial course that DAD mandates that all scholarship holders attend. And I enjoyed it so much. I've continued learning German ever since, and I think it's really useful. I can't claim to be very proficient, but yes, I, I get by, and I think it's very useful in daily interactions um, outside of work and even within work because not all the departments um, speak English. For example, the administrative department or the finance department of the medical faculty here in Heidelberg, um, is all the, the interactions are in German. So I find it useful to, to be able to follow at least some, some bits of the conversation um, to approach people and also in daily life. I think it's just nice uh, to be able to interact with people outside of my uh, scope of work um, you know, on the street or in the supermarket or anywhere else. I think it's just, it's good to, to know. So, so, so if you don't want just to stay in your university bubble, it's always good to speak some German. And as you pointed out, a lot of administrative staff at universities, it's um, not everybody uh, speaks fluently English. So you always need then some German at a certain point. It's, uh, so it's maybe a good idea to, to take a German language course anyway. <laughs> But yeah, you can see um, it's it's also possible to get along without it in your case. Yeah, uh, but um, for example, in Unish, uh, I'm currently enrolled in the uh, German language and there's currently German uh, courses, so it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, we are also regarding a lot of questions um, um, about funding and, and, and paid PhD um, uh, positions. Um, Maybe you, you can comment on, on, on that. Claudia, um, does the BAM um, offer funding for PhD positions or do people have to bring their own money with them? Uh, no, actually, That's we run... always good if people bring their own money with them. If we don't <laughs> complain, if, and I think it, it's another reason to get in touch with a possible supervisor or someone you identify from publications that is of interest at a particular institute, like BAM, for example, in the field of materials research. But um, because we can give you advice on how to apply for funding from external funding that we also use, but we also run an internal program which funds about 25 to 30 PhD students uh, scholarships each year. So it's not a scholarship, but it's an actual salary like uh, mm. those PhD uh, projects you get funded by the 
DFG by the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. So uh, there's an internal program. We have a website like uh, I think almost everyone else. I can also post it in the chat uh, where you can find all the open positions. It's an open and transparent scheme. But I would also uh, underline uh, everything we talked about before, that it's worthwhile getting in touch with the supervisor just to identify the best possible funding for your personal situation. And thank you very much. And, and Jenny, is this the same at uh, your faculty? Do you have uh, also funding for people applying for a PhD or do they have to bring their own scholarships with them? Or you are, you're also muted. Sorry for that. <laughs> I did mention before the Fast Track Scholarship Program. Um, once uh, for people who have done their bachelor program but uh, and, and completed them at a very high level. But there are also the PhD positions I've mentioned, which are um, within the scope of uh, structured programs like funded by the DFG. Um, there are research training groups um, as well or collaboration. Oh, we're, we're, you have a drop out. Um, maybe have you pressed the mute button or something? We, we can't hear you at the moment. Sorry. So maybe we just switch then to 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 Julich. Um, um, do you have paid positions or um, um, yes? So what do, the what positions do you that can offer? be found on our website. They are funded um, through the institute's budget or through uh, third-party fundings. And if someone applies directly um, and sends in an open application, um, our colleagues will check if they have um, the budget for funding um, the position and some candidates also bring funding, for example, um, if they join with a scholarship. But the majority, I think, of all positions is funded through um, yeah, the budget from the Institute's third party funding. And if you join for PhD in Jülich, as I said before, um, you receive, um, in most cases, a three years contract and also the funding is guaranteed um, for this period of time. So there are a lot of opportunities um, um, within the universities and the universities, uh, um, uh, also the research institutions, uh, you can find a lot. And I think the colleagues also posted some links about um, funding. There was also a question on um, how important conference proceedings are, um, the participation in conferences to, um, to, to to, to, to have later on a, a position or to be um, um, awarded um, um, a, a paid position. Can you uh, reflect on that? Is, um, is it very important in your cases that people show that they were active in conferences and in societies, research societies? Um, um, maybe I can... Uh, start with an answer. Uh, I think it's you already mentioned it, Birgit. It, you have to show a track record, a record at all of the career stages. And after your master's, you don't have a tremendous amount of time to produce papers. So participation in conferences just shows you that you are active and engaged in a certain topic. Plus, you get in touch with the community. You may build up contacts, you may, may be able to approach someone. So it's one element of building your career um, record. That's how I think how we would look at it or uh, I've been uh, experiencing careers developing over time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And Mrs. Nikolic, Gabriela gives us uh, or gives me the advice that there's uh, a research in Germany funding brochure uh, and it continues a broad overview of funding programs. So it's maybe a good idea to look um, into this brochure and I think Julia Altmann already uh, posted um, the link to this funding uh, brochure and you can see uh, what are the possibilities where, where you can look something up. 
um, that's maybe a, a good idea. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe, um, Birgi, just can mm -hmm. I just add another comment? At the moment, at least in the natural sciences and the engineering field, there's really a shortage of bright uh, candidates. So to our international audience, it's uh, a big encouragement to, to look for positions because uh, I think if, if you're a gifted, talented person, the chances are very high that people are looking for you somewhere in Germany. So I think that is uh, that was really an encouragement, Claudia. So um, I hope people heard it. Uh, so you have good chances here in Germany for doing your PhD, um, especially in natural science and engineering, but certainly also in in the humanities. And uh, um, so you, you just have to to see what you want to do, how you fit uh, with your um, research work um, into into the programs and in the research work of uh, universities or um, uh, research institutes. And um, Let's see if we have some more questions. Um, ah, th that is a comment to what I uh, just said. So Isabel Sanders uh, is asking, are there generally fewer paid PhD positions in humanities and social sciences in Germany? Um, um, in, in, in respect, we were just talking about engineering, natural sciences. Um, I think you... If, if I'm not completely wrong, uh, in, in general, I think in, in natural sciences and engineering, there's more third-party funding. So, um, and that's why there are often sometimes more paid PhD positions because they, but, but it really depends on the department, uh, on the faculty, um, uh, what projects they, are, they currently uh, have, what research projects. So there are also a lot of projects uh, in the humanities and social sciences, which are, for example, financed by the German Research Foundation, uh, or they have a graduate school which is uh, financed there. So you, you can't generally say that there, that there is not a funding or paid positions uh, in that field, but maybe I think um, you, you, you can uh, correct me. Um, um, I think in natural sciences, you, you there's a lot of more third-party funding um, in, in yes. often. So um, that's why there are sometimes more paid positions than, for example, in the humanities. Um, but um, you, you always have to look it up. There are also strong uh, departments in, in the humanities with a lot of third-party funding where you can also find um, a good positions um, for, for your PhD. You want to add yes, something? If you can um, hear me, <laughs> Janine, for example. If you can hear me now. Yes, yes. We, are <laughs> we were you now. talking about uh, funding of research projects for doctoral or um, postdoctoral researchers. Yes, we've got, uh, for example, collaborative research centers, research training groups funded by the DFG. So scientists work together on inter interdisciplinary research programs in the collaborative research centers. And um, uh, the research training groups provide doctoral qualification in focused um, research. And these are all funded by the German, uh, by the D. Oh, we, s we already have. Um, um... <laughs> We maybe have an internet problem. We can't hear you any longer, Janie. But um, we are already, uh, anyway, coming sh shortly to the end uh, of our online talk today. So I want to, to ask the panel, do you have a take-home message for our audience? Um, so, so what is important in, in finding a PhD in Germany? So maybe... We start with our two doctoral candidates here. Uh, Isan, do you have to your colleagues a take home message? Uh, yeah, um, just to, 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 ah, to don't be afraid to contact the supervisor and talk to them, exchange, have a good communication with them and just uh, show your motivation. They are always sensitive to, to that. So just don't be afraid and just go for it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that's always a good idea. Just go for it. If you wa really want it, go for it. And Swati, what is your, what is your comment? Yeah, again, my, my take home message is, is the same as uh, essence. I would say just um, contact potential supervisors. Tell them what you're interested in. Tell them where you can contribute. Um, convince them that you're the right person for them. And this process might take a while. But eventually, you will find the one supervisor for you. So, yeah, just be persistent and be motivated. That's that's uh, really really great. To, I think you have to show the motivation and your really your interest. And Alyssa, when it comes to Jülich, what it's what is your take similar. home message? So, if you want to do your doctorate in Germany, go for it and start applying. And um, if you're not sure yet. Um, then do exactly what you're doing today. So inform yourself um, about the framework conditions and use the opportunities um, that you have to exchange with people who already went this way. Thank you very much. And, and Claudio? Yeah, just to add say? on this, I think everything you're doing here to get an orientation because the German landscape is quite complex. There are lots of opportunities, but sometimes it may look like a jungle, but there are always people behind it. So you just get in touch and uh, persistence will be rewarded. So if you maybe someone doesn't answer, just try the next or try it another time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And Jani? Oh, you're sorry. We're so sorry. You're still muted. <laughs> we we can't hear you. Sorry, um, but uh, maybe one more try. No, I'm sorry. It's not working. But I I think you will can, would also can you hear give me now? Encouragement to ah now we can hear you. Yes. Um. No, I've lost the thread because <laughs> yes. Well. Um. If you want to take to do your research in Germany, be well informed about the university where you're going to go to and use your research project to identify experts in your specific uh, research area and um, get some information about requirements and everything and just go for it. Even with or without German knowledge, you are at the right place here. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So we heard it now several times, just go for it. So thank you very much to, to all the panelists for your good advice. Um, I would like to point out again that tomorrow there will be an online talk on postdoc opportunities and on Thursday you have the opportunity to ask your questions to three German professors. And um, I also want uh, to add that the recording of this online talk will be available shortly on the Research in Germany website. And additionally, uh, we will provide a list with the links mentioned today. So if you want to look it up where you can find PhD positions and learn about the programs, there will be web links available. Um, the link to the website will be sent to you via email after the online talk. And uh, Gabriela just said to me, please also look uh, into your <laughs> spam folders then, because her emails are mostly <laughs> sent to the spam folder. We don't know why, but <laughs> if you don't receive an email, uh, also look at your spam folder. Um, at the end of the online talk, we have prepared a little feedback uh, questionnaire with three questions. And we would be very grateful if you took the time to stay a little bit longer with us and uh, to answer uh, these questions. So thank you very much again. Thank you very much again to our panelists for your time, for your great advice. And thank you to the audience that you stayed uh, so long with us. Um, this hour just went away like nothing. So <laughs> I, I hope you could take um, some advice uh, with you and we would all be yeah, we, we would all like to see you here in Germany for and uh, see you as a PhD candidate here in Germany. So we will see and um, maybe you also apply for a DID scholarship. So all the best to you and um, yeah, hope hopefully we will see you soon in Germany. Bye bye. Have a great day. Bye.